what we as people of faith believe in 2008 is not the same as people of faith believe in 1808, in 1608, in 1208, or in 808. In the 19th century, there, was, there were people who quoted the Bible to justify slavery. St. Paul says, slaves, be obedient to your masters. And they used that as a biblical proof test for slavery, which is why we have the Northern and Southern Baptist Church, you know, because they got upset over it and they split up. People have quoted the Bible for all sorts of things. In 1973, as a result of greater understanding of human psychology, the American Psychological Association declassified homosexuality as a mental illness. But you know, in my life, there were people receiving electroshock therapy to be cured. Do you believe that? In my lifetime. Now, in 1975, the Catholic Church, the Sacred Congregation of the Doctrine for the Faith, which is the watchdog for orthodoxy in the church, produced a document entitled Declaration on Certain Questions Concerning Sexual Ethics. In this document, they made a very remarkable statement. They stated that there are, quote, homosexuals who are such because of some kind of innate instinct Unquote. What they said was, it's an orientation, it's not a choice. The first couple I married as a priest were in their 70s. There's no way they're going to have a baby. <laughs> so if two people of different genders who cannot reproduce can enter into a valid marriage, then why? cannot two people of the same gender enter into a valid marriage. It isn't the crude and overt vulgarity of some other churches, but rather it's the coldness of the maitre d' who won't seat you, or of a club that puts you on a waiting list with no intention of ever letting you join and simply ask you to wait in polite, almost apologetic tones. In effect, <clears throat> the bishops are asking gay and lesbian people to live their lives alone. Why? Who does this benefit? And how exactly is society helped by singling out a minority and excluding them from the union of love and life, which is marriage? How is marriage protected by intimidating gay and lesbian people into to living loveless and lonely lives? What is accomplished by any of this? Or still, is to intimidate a gay or lesbian person into a heterosexual marriage, which is doomed from its inception and makes two victims instead of one by this hurtful theology. This theology, which is parroted by clerics in polished tones from pulpits, produces the very prejudice and hatred in our society which they claim to abhor. When the hierarchy prohibited artificial birth control, most of the faithful in the United States, Canada, and Europe scratched their head in wonderment and promptly proceeded to ignore them. There is an expression in theology, vox populi, vox dei. The voice of the people is the voice of God. If your son or daughter is gay or lesbian, let them know that you love them unconditionally. Let them know that you are not ashamed or embarrassed by them. Guide them as you would guide your other children to finding true and abiding love. Let them know that marriage is a union of love and life and it is possible for them to. The act of casting a vote takes you a few minutes. 
but it can cause other human beings untold happiness or sorrow for a lifetime. It can grant them hope and acceptance, or it can cause them to lose civil rights. It can be a rebuff to bigotry and to hatred, or it can encourage bigotry and hatred. Personally, I am morally compelled to vote no on Proposition 8. It is my most sincere hope that the people of California will join with those others around the world, such as Canada, Europe, South Africa, who welcome their gay and lesbian family members fully into society by granting them the civil right to marry. When I said this the first time, I said, I know these words of truth will cost me dearly, but to withhold them would be far more costly, and I would become an accomplice to a moral evil that strips gay and lesbian people not only of their civil rights, but of their human dignity as well. Jesus said, the truth will set you free. He never promised it would be easy or, with, or without personal cost to speak the truth. So let me tell you, the only thing more expensive, the only thing more expensive than not, not speaking the truth, uh, the only thing more expensive than speaking the truth is not speaking the truth. So. I ask you to join with me, a lot of my brother priests and nuns who are going to vote no on Prop 8. Remember, God is love. And when you choose to love, you reflect God most perfectly in this world. When you choose to love, you're on the right side of God. And if you don't, God help you.